I want to bring in former Ambassador Nikki Haley joining us now. Ambassador, great to have you with us today. I know you've been watching all of this uh, with great interest. What really jumped out at you as you watched these three military leaders testify about what happened in Afghanistan? Martha, I think we heard from our generals about what transpired. The person we need to hear from is the president of the United States. I mean, this even caused more questions, I think, for President Biden, which is, OK, you said none of your military said anything to you about keeping forces on the ground, about keeping Bagram Air Force Base, all that. You said you couldn't recall it. Well, clearly, your general said they did tell you. So we need an answer. We need the truth on that because you've already lied once on that. Then you go and you say that the Afghan military, that he was told the Afghan military could stand on their own. The generals countered that again and told him the risk he was taking by doing that. That's not the case. Then you go and say al Qaeda is not in Afghanistan. All of your generals said al-Qaeda is very much in Afghanistan. And, oh, by the way, when the Taliban took over, they let out all of those al-Qaeda prisoners mm -hmm. that are now throughout Afghanistan. There's so many questions. He said that, that they wouldn't leave any Americans behind. You left Americans behind. So I think we heard some hard truths from the generals. And that elevated a lot more questions for President Biden because he owes the American people, he owes the military answers as to why he made these decisions and put his military through this. I'm curious what you think about the way they spoke about the Doha agreement, because there was a, a bit of leaning on that as sort of, well, that, you know, if there's any reason why it all fell apart, it was because of the Doha agreement, which just to remind people was an agreement with the Taliban. The Afghan national forces and leadership were not included in those discussions with the Trump administration. It was the beginning of trying to begin this exit uh, process. What did you think about that, Ambassador? Well, the reason the Afghan government wasn't included is because the Taliban said that they wouldn't negotiate if the Afghan government was involved. Well, that's problem number one. Um, number two is the Taliban is the Taliban. I don't care what they say. They are going to be who they are. You can't change that kind of ideology overnight. They believe what they believe. They hate America. They're, you know, they've got dead bodies hanging in the streets to show people what not to do. That is the Taliban. So I, I don't think we ever should have trusted the Taliban. It's why I'm adamant that we can't recognize the Taliban because no aid should go to them. Um, and it's, they're a terrorist organization. And you can't negotiate with a terrorist organization. You, you know, with regard to Senator Blackburn's exchange, which was very strong, uh, on the issue of why would General Milley spend all of this time, and, and Senator Haley talked about it too, during, you know, in 2021, while there was so many things sort of falling apart in Afghanistan, spent all of this time, he said several hours, he couldn't really say how much, talking to all of these authors who were writing these books, basically trashing the Trump administration. Is that appropriate? And does it, as she said, politicize the military and downgrade our relationships with our allies? It's the most unprofessional thing I've seen. I mean, even as a cabinet member, you don't talk to someone writing a book if they're if it's you don't talk to journalists about books. You don't talk about any of that because you that's political. But in the military, they're so conscious about not politicizing what they do. The idea that he would sit down and do these tell all books just boggles the mind. I mean, I know my husband, he can't take a picture in uniform. I can't, you have to be careful about which journalist you talk to, what you say. I can't imagine that General Milley didn't know that. And I have to think he's got a lot of regrets right now. You know, one of the lines in the book, in the Woodward book, from Milley, quoting Milley, says, if we're going to attack, I'm gonna call you ahead of time. It's not going to be a surprise. He claims that that conversation was completely above board and that it's the kind of conversation he has all the time. Well, I think, you know, he I think he tried to explain what that was. I had the bigger the bigger concern I had was the process. You know, normally if I had a conversation and the Chinese came to me and said, we're concerned about this. Is this going to happen? I would have that conversation with them and then I would send a readout or pick up the phone and call everyone else that's affected by that, send it to the National Security Agency and make sure that everybody got the readout. He did say he spoke with, um, whether it was Secretary Pompeo or Mark Meadows or, you know, his counterparts about that call and what took place. So I think he answered the question that that happened, mm -hmm. but it only brought up more questions of, you know, what was the allegation that the Chinese were making? I just think talking in this tell-all was... Yeah. 
it was just poor judgment on his part, which leads to there was poor judgment with this whole Afghanistan debacle starting at the top with Joe Biden. And he's got to answer. He doesn't get a pass from answering reporters questions on you lied and said that the military didn't tell you. And actually, multiple generals told you, don't do this. This is a yeah. mistake. Yeah. Um, it, we don't have uh, time to play it, but I would encourage people to look at Kevin Kramer's exchange when he wanted to know um, why the president was so uh, taking a victory lap over the strike against uh, terrorists in Afghanistan, which turned out to be uh, seven children and some aid workers, and that we haven't really heard from the president on that debacle either. Um, Ambassador and former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, always good to have you with us. Thank you very much for making time for us today. Thank good you so you. much, Martha. You bet.